So I want to talk about uh, our seafood surveys uh, and, and have you guys, uh, if you've not entered your stuff, have you enter some stuff, take a look, see if, make sure everybody's entering stuff in the right ways and all that kind of good stuff. And then also talk about our existing data. Um, and so um, uh, remember the, the key question that, that's driving all this from a management perspective is can we, um, if we wanted to purchase more, to use our economic tools to, to you know, support um, uh, industries or, or types of items that uh, we think are behaving more appropriately, can we do that? So that's the whole point of this, right? So years ago, we were having conversations with um, Seafood Watch and everything. That, that was the question we sort of came up with is, uh, is it even possible to use these guides or other things to, to make an informed decision? And so that's what you guys are in the middle of, uh, or, or maybe getting near finishing soon, um, data collection. But I wanted to also note that um, uh, we, didn't, we didn't do our, our sort of third big project because one of our sensors, is, as I mentioned before, is down. But we're, we'll do a little bit, a, a small version of this. And so, um, and that is uh, not exactly about the core question of seafood sustainability, but about more general sustainability. When we asked people, if you'll recall during our surveys, where have they heard about microplastics? Just about any, or one of the most popular categories is in the ocean or in water, right? So, so we're not talking about an airport here. We're not talking about a movie theater. We're talking about an, an industry that is, you know, fundamentally using the source that it seems to be the vast majority of the public understands is um, being impacted by plastic pollution, right? And so um, another example of that is from uh, our surveys the last few years merged with, the, with your data this year. This is people's self-reported from your op opinion polling, um, how has their use of disposable or single-use plastic items changed relative to before the pandemic? These are means and standard errors. And this is a relative scale, right? And so, so what we see is, um, uh, uh, and, and, and the positive number here means they use more. The negative number means they use less than pre-pandemic. And so obviously when we had the pandemic, everybody was out and nobody could, nobody could, uh, right? We, we rescinded our temporary plastic bag bans um, uh, because people said maybe people are going to get COVID from these bags and all these other things. And so they wanted people to have throwaway items. Um, so for all those reasons, Everybody, uh, the average person used a lot more plastic than they, in 2020 than they did in 2019. By the next year, that had pretty much dropped back down to people were reporting about the same amount of usage as pre-pandemic. And then last year, uh, we saw a, a significant drop. And this year, I haven't run the stats here. I don't, I don't know if these are statistically significantly different, but at least the trend is to continue, is continuing downward with more people reporting that they they feel like they're using less, uh, you know, plastic, fewer plastic bags, fewer, fewer plastic forks and that kind of stuff. And so with that, we have our, our one little uh, sort of mini data collection thing in, in here. And if you recall, you guys are grabbing um, just some representative uh, thing. You only have to grab one, but you could grab multiple, but you only have to grab one from, from one of up to three different, re or, or three different restaurants. And so I just want to go over how we're going to capture that and look at that as a class. And so I'm hoping that this will be, uh, we'll take some time and we'll get this done today, or at least a lot of it. Okay, so one is, uh, this is in our shared Google Drive and there's two things here. There's a folder for images, which is sort of like voucher specimens, and then there's the data sheet. So this is the data sheet here. Um, and so I'll show you guys how to enter that in a second. But when you enter your data into that sheet, it's gonna generate an automatic uh, uh, unique code, right? And then you can just copy that. And when you upload your picture, this is what will become the, the name of the, the file of the photo. Cool. Right over there on the right, I have a little black thing. And I have, and I have this uh, place. And you guys can photograph your item if it's a cup or a fork or whatever. Uh, and then you can just drop your item into, that, into this box right here. So um, I'll just note that uh, before 2019, or excuse me, before the pandemic, 2019, it, we, we were starting to see some um, suppliers have alternative to the traditional plastic item. Obviously, it was the law by then, 
in, in most jurisdictions. Um, but uh, it, it still was very difficult, right? And speaking with, with owners, it was very hard to get you know, the supply chain and everything. Obviously, during the pandemic, everything went to hell in a handbasket. Things have finally settled down, and there's been enough, ye enough years into this that we have new production streams coming online and stuff like that. So the hope is that, well, we'll see. But we'll, so the hope is that we'll see uh, things other than traditional plastics. So here are two items I grabbed this weekend. Right, one as you see in the photo here. So this is a straw, and this looks like a plastic straw. You can feel it if you guys want. It feels like a plastic straw, but it's actually made out of sugar. So these are we're seeing these fairly common, and when you look at these guys, they're they, they're sort of beige with sort of flex. Um, and then this guy, which is um, a water cup, when I asked for some water at this restaurant, um, and uh, it looks like plastic. It feels like plastic. It is it is traditional plastic. Um, and if you look on the bottom, it has a, a triangle, which is a whole crock that was, that was created by the plastics industry to make you think you're doing something, just to be clear. But that's, that's another conversation. Um, but so uh, the, the ca it's the category of the type of plastic that's here. This is, this is category one. This is PT, uh, PET. Um, and so if I didn't know anything else, I just I, when I typed this in, I'd say, oh, it's regular plastic. But actually, if I look closely, it says on this guy, 100% post-consumer PET. So it says plastic, but it's been it's made from recovered stuff. So it's not virgin plastic, right? So this 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 is a reuse. This is a reuse item. So um, anyway, but m maybe you have information. Maybe you don't. Maybe the thing you had just is it looks like plastic, and you're gonna do your best. So we're not gonna again. We're not gonna run it through the ATR because it's busted right now. But but you'll just enter it as your best guess. Cool. All right, let's take a quick look at that. And so, so, so fill, out the, fill out the data sheet first so you can get that number, and that number you'll use when you, when you take your photo over there and then, and then upload it. So let me just show you guys what we're talking about. Okay, so here's the data sheet, and let's just make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. Everybody, everybody with me? So there's drop downs here. Okay, so Ventura County, Santa Barbara, LA. Uh, this is a little bit funky, just to make it work out nice for the for the label. It's year, month, day of the month, right? So just type it in as a as a number, the date, uh, and then the place and the address and all that kind of stuff. And then and this just means that this is just one. Everybody's just one. That, that's if we were putting it through the ATR and we made a couple of runs. So this all just says none. And this just says, hey, I got I got one item from this business. I got one item from this business. And this one is I got two items from this business. That's all that is. And then over here, this, so the gray stuff, right? Gray stuff you don't need to, to mess with. Um, and then who it is. And then when you click this guy, it'll come up with different options. And I, I think I tried to cover most of what you guys would, would get. There's also an other. And then what the color of the thing is. And then what, what you think it is, what it, what it appears to be uh, made out of. Um, and there's also an other here. And then there's a place where you can just put a note. So here's that one where it was definitely plastic, but I noted it was post-consumer waste, right? So I'm gonna type all that in. Then I'm just gonna take my item over there on the black background, take a photo, click, and then upload my photo to the, upload my photo here, and just change the name and you're done. Yes, so thank you. And also I have a little, I have a Sharpie and a paint pen. If you, some, some of the like slick plastic stuff the paint pen doesn't stick well on. I mean, I mean, the Sharpie doesn't stick well on, so you can use either one. And all you guys need to do is just put the name of the restaurant, November 2023 um, is good. Cool? I'll put those over there. So that's this. So I know not everybody brought their, brought their plastic today, and, and you know, that's okay, you can turn it in, but, but um, I'd like to get started at least. Um, so so that's, this is the first thing I want you guys to work on, but then I just wanted to, uh, since not everybody, correct, not everybody has plastic, yeah, so I wanted to, I'll go over the next part so that we can, we break people that aren't doing the plastic and just jump to the next part. Cool? Okay, so um, what we're going to be, do okay, so then also, okay, so here's our seafood surveys, right? So this is the stuff you guys are all entering. Everybody's making multiple copies, but, um, but again, uh, do me a favor, if you guys, if this is one of you guys, if you wouldn't mind moving your copied version of the data sheet into your drive so that we don't have these extra versions confusing folks so people aren't accidentally posting them in the wrong spot. So we should just have one that says the survey signups 
and one that, and then there's the data sheets if you want to take those, and then the one that says enter data here. So you should always enter the one that says enter data here, not, not a copy of stuff. Um, okay, so, so I'll look, we'll look at that in a second, but what I wanted to just point out to you guys is um, obviously for, for your learning purposes, uh, you know, we're, we're going to run out of time uh, to, to look in depth at our stuff. So I've given you guys two different data sets that you can look at. One is from um, a long time ago, 2007, and one is from last year. Um, and so uh, th this will look very, if I open this guy up, this 2007, this will look very familiar to you. It's all the same categories, et cetera, uh, or most of the same categories, et cetera. At the bottom of the quantitative, just like all our other stuff, if you go to the bottom of the quantitative, there, there's various summaries of, of things like how much did stuff from this country cost and all that kind of jazz. So, so you guys can look at that. So the fall 2007 is done. It's, it's all everything. The fall 2022 is, is done for the most part, but it's not fully done. I haven't, I haven't had time to calculate the miles distance. And so that's what I was going to ask you guys to help me with today. And so let's just have a look at this. So again, this is going to look very similar to the stuff you guys are doing, right? And I'm going to go to the market. There's qualitative, quantitative, et cetera. And then there is uh, this thing called distance location. So, so if, you've entered, if you've entered your data, at least, at least your first two restaurants, if you haven't, do that. Two, let's do your plastic. Let's you know, do your plastic, get that checked off so we can see what the patterns we have there. And then once those are done, then, you get, then I'd like you guys to jump over and we'll just spend, you know, uh, half an hour, 45 minutes or on this, is to help me with this. And so go to the distance location tab. And what I need to do is uh, every year there's different locations of things. So here are all these locations, right? Bangladesh, Brazil, um, uh, the eastern part of Nova Scotia, right? As, as specific as we could capture from the geographic description of where the the seafood came from, right? And so um, what I've done is I've, or what you guys need to do is just go here and pick a spot on that, in that area along the eastern central part of the country. Or if it's something big like Australia, you're like, well, dude, Australia is massive. Where do I pick? Then just Google Australia's largest fishing port and use that, right? If it's a large area. And then, uh, and then just say, tell me what that is. So I've done these first examples for you. And then we just need to calculate the distance to uh, San Pedro, LAX, or uh, LA, uh, LA Union Station. Um, let's just do San Pedro. So let's not worry about, let's not worry about these other two columns. Um, we'll just do F. So, uh, so all you guys need to do is go to this guy right here, this online calculator. Type in San Pedro Latin Lawn is one, is one thing. And then whichever one you've just calculated is the other. And then it'll give you the distance in kilometers and just put that in. And then I'll be able to, um, we'll be able to calculate how far our, fi our fish traveled for you guys at your various restaurants and stuff. Cool? Does that make sense? So for this one, you're just going to, again, this is the 2022. You're just going to go to the distance, what does it say? Hard for me to read right there. Distance something tab. And the, the link you need for it is right there. And only, j just worry about the, this first column F. Don't you don't have to worry about the other ones. That's probably just a waste of our time. Cool. All right. So let me do one last thing before before I turn you guys loose, and that is I just want to show you guys how we are looking at the data that you're collecting, which is why I wanted everybody to get some data entered now, so we can we can start to look at it. Um, so in this case, I'm going to look at the qualitative the qualitative sheet. Cool. And if I go over here. I've coded your answers and I've summarized the stuff at the bottom. So um, again, you just have to type in the stuff on the left. Don't, don't, you don't have to worry about doing the coding and stuff. I'll do that once you get it typed in. But basically, this is what this is what we where we are so far. With again, partially in progress. We're not done by any means, but at least the initial few restaurants that you guys have typed in. Have you heard of sustainable seafood or MSC or Seafood Watch or any of those things to the wait staff? Only about third. 13 or 14% of them say they have heard of that stuff. When we ask them about their customers, 
hey, how, how often do your customers ask about sustainable seafood? It's about 4%, right? Which is, uh, from our polling, that's about, <laughs> that's not necessarily distinguishable from zero, right? Probably, right? So that's pretty low. And then uh, what about uh, people ask where it comes from? Do they ask about the source of the seafood? And only about 7% of people um, ask that, right? And so in compare, in, so I would note that if we look back at our survey results that you guys did, and we, when we asked people directly, we said, hey, when you purchase seafood, how often do you ask you know, where it comes from? And 12% of the people said, all the time. And an additional 17% said, eh, at least occasionally, right? So we could say that, you know, according to our surveys, it's about a third of the people say they at least occasionally ask about where their seafood comes from. But that's not what we're hearing in the, in the wait staff. Now, maybe it's the case that these folks are just like self-selecting and not going out to eat in restaurants or whatever, which is possible. But that's one interpretation. And then another one is, um, remember, we ask if people have heard about these things, right? Hey, have you heard of MSC, of Seafood Watch, of blah, 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 blah. And so the most, the most popular things people said they'd heard of was sustainable seafood. So more than half of our general public said at least heard of it, right? They might not know what it means, might not believe in it, but they at least have heard of it. Whereas our wait staff are saying they've only, and so, so those are pretty, right? Those are pretty fair comparisons.